Okay, everybody. I hope you're having a great night. I just wanted to make this video and dedicate it to the person who left me a very heartfelt comment last night. I have made videos about animals before, but this one really touched me because I have 132 videos and 20 subscribers and my channel is not that old so I don't really get comments and the ones that I've gotten so far were on other videos that were just plain cruel and this one was the complete opposite. Um, I totally appreciate that my video reached somebody and hopefully helped somebody. It actually made me cry because I'm, it makes me glad that I'm doing what I'm doing and that's to try to reach people who are not feeling themselves or are depressed or just having a bad day, having a good day. I make those videos and I reached, um, I had my comments on hold so nobody could comment without my approval because I got some nasty comments. So tonight I decided I'm not going to make a video because I'm just kind of tired and actually was sleeping and woke up in my computer chair, which I'm really good at because of the medication or it has me all screwed up and I just sleep wherever. I mean, it could be on the floor for all I know, but I have a good laugh for you. Um, when the bearded, my bearded dragons are older, you go, give me a kiss, and they've got a tongue that's sticky, so they can touch whatever, like a mealworm or a cricket. I don't feed crickets, but I'm just using it as a, an example. But they use their tongue to touch the item and grab it. They don't use their teeth. So when they're older, I say, give me a kiss, and they touch my lip, and they give me kisses. And they give my golden retriever kisses. Um, it's really sweet. But if you look real close, right here, Java's my baby. And the other night, I was up all night, and then I slept all day, so I didn't feed him. And she's a chow hound. She eats everything. Every single day, her complete, her dish is completely empty. And she gets a lot of food because she's a growing baby. So I give her a lot of food to make sure she's not hungry. Well, this morning, I'm like, oh, come here, you sweetheart. You know, because she's getting to the age where she's not so nippy they hiss and they get they try to bite you because that's their defense because they're babies and they're scared so this morning I'm like well come here let's do this I train them slowly I try to hand feed them I try to hold them just for short periods of time and just to try to get them used to you you do that so I held her and I had her up against my chest and that's how I always hold them and the older ones like to scoot down and be held and cradled like babies instead of being up on your shoulder where they should be <sighs> and I let them because I like that they think they're babies so I had her and I had her on my chest and I would hold a mealworm and I'd say here you go and I fed her three out of my hand, and that's the way you get them to trust you. Trust you, if that didn't sound right. Um, sometimes I talk so fast that it sounds like I'm talking through mud. I'm sorry about that. I just always feel like I'm in a hurry, 
because I have a, a lot to say and my mind works faster than my mouth can get my point across. Anyway, so I decided that I'm going to try her on my shoulder because usually they will run up and over your shoulder, onto your back, into the middle of your back, and then you can't get them. You can't reach them. Or they'll do that and they'll jump onto the floor and they'll run. Um, that's when they're babies. When they're older, they're too lazy and too fat. So anyway, this morning I decided I'm going to have her help me prep their food. So I took her in the kitchen with me and like I said, I hand, fe hand fed her three mealworms. I just choose there and I put them on my hand and I'm like, okay, you can have it. And that's, that's Java, my baby. And um, she took the first one nice. Usually, normally, they use their tongue and they take them nice. So she did. I, I gave her three. I figured three will hold you over until I get you your meal. So I'm like, okay, you had three. I need to get the rest of the meals prepared. That's, you know, you cut up fruit. I don't feed them fruit, I'm sorry. Uh, you f their sweet potatoes or their whatever, you know, um, that you feed them. Get that all in a dish and their greens, their collard greens or their, you know, turnip greens, um, whatever greens you give them. I try to give them a variety. And I've never seen anybody else give them their mealworms and their greens and their vegetables all in one dish. And that's how I get them to eat everything. Otherwise they can become picky where they just will eat their worms and they'll ignore their greens and veggies. They're like children. You know, you give the child the candy and you give them spinach, well, they're going to eat the candy and they're going to ignore the spinach. Good example. So I mix them together. They'll eat it. They'll love it. They'll eat the greens before they'll eat the worms. And I'm like, is something wrong with you guys? That's unusual. But it works. So why change something that works? So I started to get her, her, their, their dishes ready. And I moved her and I turned her around so she was facing out, facing away, no, facing toward me so she wouldn't run backwards if she did decide to run. You try to get them to face, you know, sit on your shoulder and face you so you can, you know, watch them or... So with the old bearded dragons, you say, come on, give me kisses, give me kisses. And they'll just lick your lip, you know, no big deal. Like I said, they they do it with my golden retriever. Um, only her. The other dogs don't seem to get into the bearded dragons. But Sasha, she's my girl. She's my red golden retriever. And she's five? I think she's five. Yeah. And I'll say, here, Sasha, you know, give the baby some love. And they'll exchange kisses, and that'll be it. I trust her. She's not going to snap at them. I mean, beard dragons are prickly. So anyway, I'm holding her and I'm like, oh, Java, you're being so good. And I'm petting her and talking sweet to her as I'm getting all, of, you know, the food prep done. And I turn to her and I said, come on, give me kisses. And whomp, she bit me. And their teeth, I said, I'd rather get bit by a kitten or a puppy. They, oh my gosh. I, I couldn't believe I've gotten bit before but it's been like on my finger um, but as you see I'll try I'll show you again right here and right here I mean she they can open their mouths really wide and because my mouth was moving she thought it was probably a, a mealworm or probably you know a bug I call it I call it bugs even though they're worms and all of a sudden, I'm like, and I'm sorry that I cussed in my videos. I am me, and 
that's how I speak and it comes from working in factories and being with an old truck driver he's not an old truck driver as in age he used to be a truck driver as well as working in a factory so we can have potty mouths but it's honesty and I've read that people who cuss are more intelligent that's see I forget about that that screensaver comes on um, people who have who cuss are more intelligent because they have a bigger vocabulary now, that's just what I read and I don't cuss for that reason I cuss because that's what feels right at the time you know I, I speak my mind that's how I am I'm very open so anyway she bit me and I'm like Damn it, Java. Ow. You know, what the hell did you do that for? Because I've never. They always just give you a little lick. Even when I go to feed them or I go to pet them, I go to pet them in the morning. And they'll lick my hand. They'll give me morning kisses. And beer dragons are extremely affectionate if you raise them right, I guess. Or I had one that wasn't raised right that I adopted. Uh, from a pet store and he was just a jerk you could not get near him he was just I ended up taking him back because he was so mean apparently he was neglected but you know $50 later I find that out $50 non-refundable adoption fee I find this out so anyway so Java what the f you know wow and she's like I said, she's a beast. She will eat anything, absolutely anything. I fill her dish with greens, with bugs, with everything that not well not fruit. I refuse to do fruit because it is not good for their teeth. But I mean, otherwise, I give them what they're allowed to have, and she gets a great quantity because she's a growing baby. So also, she bit me, and I'm like. Damn, that hurt. You were going back in your enclosure. It hurt so bad. My lips, right here, half my lips, went numb. Like, I went to the dentist. And I'm not joking. It hurt so bad. I'm like, I put my finger there. I'm like, I'm bleeding. She actually made me bleed. Come believe it. She's supposed to be nice to me. I love her. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, I was just stunned. Um, that, well, I mean, I understand she what she's thinking. You know, oh, you gave me three mealworms. I give more, and they happen to be on your face. <laughs> Shit, you know. Talk about unexpected. Good morning. Fuck. So, um that that was stunning but I thought you know I could do a a story that was funny in a way I mean look at my face she maimed me you know she 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 really did me good but um no I I got that video or that comment I'm sorry and it inspired me to make another video about animals. I do have a sad story. But after that story, I'm not sure if I want to share it. But I do. Because it tells you that I'm not perfect at this. I mean, I just got mauled <laughs> by a 300 gram lizard. But I'll make this one short. Um, when I was married before, we bought a house. And I had a little miniature dachshund. And we had a couple, we had, I think, two dogs and two or three cats. And we had just bought this house and um, had brand new carpeting installed. And I had this cat who was, I don't know, eight, nine, something years old. And 
I know that when she would go to the bathroom, she'd have blood, but I'd taken her to the vet, and the vet couldn't, nobody could really understand why. It just was. So, um, all of a sudden, I must have got home. Now, mind you, this was 2008, and it's 2024, almost 25. And, um, she was my best friend. She was the best cat. When I got her as a kitten on the way home from picking her up, I was driving and she draped herself around my neck like a scarf because she was scared. And I named her Gizzy um, after um, Gizmo from Gremlins. And um, so I took her. Of course, she threw up on me on the way home and it went all down my arm. It was fantastic. It was just, you know dream come true but um she was one who was just awesome she's an awesome cat it's very affectionate she was my cat and you know how that is where you know and, I, and I'm not trying to tell this story to make anybody depressed because this time of the year you have depression I get it but it's my point of the story is that nobody's perfect and when it comes to animals sometimes it's very hard to read or figure out what's wrong with them so that's the point of my story of I make mistakes too I'm not perfect I always say I'd like to be but probably not really because then people would have expectations and I don't need that kind of baggage but anyway so we bought this house and we had all new carpeting installed and it was the carpeting wasn't white, but it was cream color. It was close to white, but it was on clearance and that we had to put a lot in all upstairs. So all of a sudden, um, we must have come home from somewhere and there was poop. I'm just going to talk like I always do. And it had blood, so I thought it was her because she had a history you know, of that condition. And there were a couple piles around, and I'm just like, oh shit, Gizzy's sick. She's suffering. I gotta get her to the vet and, and have her put down because she's been suffering like this for a while. So I took her to the vet, and I had her put down. And in the meantime, my husband at the time cleaned up the carpet. And we all went on our way. I, you know, went, took her to the vet. You know, I called ahead and said, she's suffering. She's older. She needs to be, you know, she needs to let go. Ugh, I can't continue. So the carpets are all cleaned because, like I said, they're brand new. And I take her to the vet, and it's probably a good 45 minutes away, because that's the vet I took him to. And the carpet was all cleaned while I was gone. And I come home without her. And there's a mess again with blood in. So I ended up taking my little dachshund into the vet and here she had like a bladder infection or something. Long story short, I put the wrong animal down by accident. Like I said, I didn't want to make this a depressing. But I wanted to let people know that accidents happen. And unfortunately, it was just a bad one. I love that cat so much. She was numero uno. You know, I think I had two or three cats, and she was the one. 
and you know so many years later I forget about it because it's not something you want to think about but the guilt oh my god how do you say you put the wrong animal down when you know the puppy she just needed some antibiotics and she was fine can't say that for a kitty cat for Gizzy I had forgotten about that story until now because it just it has been so long I've had a lot of animals last year my bearded dragon she wasn't eating and she ended up having cancer of her mouth that's why she wasn't eating and the weird fact that nobody knows well I don't know who knows I've never heard it before until the vet told me with bearded dragons they go into brumation which is like hibernation and I think that my boy is in it right now because I looked and he was in the same place and he was sleeping and everything was dark so I'll see in the morning how he's doing I worry when they go into brumation because if you watch videos they talk about you think that they're dead even though they do wake up from time to time during brumation to get a drink so it's like kind of weird but anyway um yeah she hadn't eaten for like three months which was a long time but yet they can go a long time for you know months not eating because it's their um you know the way that they survive so I didn't worry too much about it and then I started syringe feeding her because she needed to eat something she was just not eating and I couldn't figure out why and to find an exotic vet is like oh my god and so expensive so it's like we were in the middle of moving so I didn't really have the chance now that sounds lame but I didn't have the chance to take her and so I you know hand felt her well force fed her more or less which I totally hate the term but I had to and um long story short again um I had to put her down and the most bizarre thing I find it interesting creepy I'm not sure how to feel about it but what can happen is you know how with a cat or dog they give them the shot the animal goes to sleep and that's it done well with bearded dragons because of their genetic makeup that makes them survive or something I don't really know what it is but they can give them the vet can give them that shot and for 24 hours they have to be observed because the bearded dragon can think that they're in brumation and even after the shot wake up uh, it's just creepy as hell so I'm like they gave her the shot and I held her and we passed her around and you know did what we had to do and then I turned her over and I said I hope that she doesn't wake up that to me it was just it's kind of a neat phenomenon but kind of not if that makes sense um, that's something it's like um, when they freeze goldfish and they thaw the goldfish and the goldfish comes back alive it's like that's nuts but no uh, you know on the flip side of things of course animals can help you with your depression but they can also add to it and I guess I never thought that side of things and you take them for granted that they're there for you every day and you know the saying goes if only they lived as long as we did but they don't so now I got four dogs three cats and three bearded dragons and we're disabled so we stay home 
all day unless you only have errands or doctor's appointments or whatever but um irregardless of that we still make mistakes and those mistakes can just be devastating um you know there is a saying uh i don't know how it's the saying goes but um sometimes the death of a pet can hurt more than the theft than the ugh. you know if i could talk it would make more sense but i didn't realize my lip was that bad until i just saw it i'm sorry i have add uh the death of a pet can hurt more than the death of a human that's a pretty big impact but you know when you spend a lot of time with an animal with a pet more than with a human or you have that bond that makes sense but it's not fair and when my kids would say that's not fair I would say life's not fair so, you know, I'm sorry if this video brought you down. That was not my intention. My intention was to tell you the funny story about Java trying to eat my face. And that I made a mistake. And it was a long time ago. And it happens. You know, animals, it doesn't matter if they're three days old, three months old. I'm just going by threes, I don't know why. Three years old, 13 years old, 23 years old, which I can't remember what the oldest cat is, but old. You know, it doesn't matter what age they are. You can lose them at any time. And that's why our clan, I call them the clan, there are babies and we call them our babies and we baby them even though they're naughty give me my damn remote polly she's so sassy she finds stuff and we're like where did she find that i wish i could put a picture of her on here i don't know how all i could do is um when i get my camcorder which i did order um then i can go around the house and i can show my bearded dragons and i can show my naughty fur kids um you know though somebody wrote on my facebook i cannot live without an animal and i remember i had to give up my cats because of my second husband where we were moving we weren't allowed to have animals and i had three siamese cats well, do you pick your future husband or do you pick your cats? I know I was dumb. But anyway, um, you know, you just, you rehome them and hope that you find the best home for them. I used to do dog rescue. And going into it, I knew it was temporary, but it was all on my own dime. Nobody gave me, I mean, the vet gave me a little bit of a break on my bills. Um, but you know, I would help these dogs, I'd rehab them, um, and then ask these days you can buy a purebred for what it costs to get a shelter dog, it's pathetic. Um, but sure, there are many times we had to rehome an animal that didn't work out, or I did, uh, you know, rescue where I would take them, I'd get them vetted, I'd get them healthy. And I'd find them new homes. But my prices were reasonable to where people were able to afford a dog. Um, that was back 26, 7, 25 years ago. It was a long time ago. I wouldn't do it again because I get too attached. Um, but anyway, um, no, I just wanted to make this video... I can call it a bipolar video because it had it ups has has its ups and its downs and its ups and its downs. And the thing is that's what kind of 
mood I'm in these days is um, the bipolar roller coaster of, you know, I have this funny story and then I have this depression, you know, and it, it's, I can't help that, but I just wanted to share the bottom line was to show what kind of impact an animal can have on you. And it really can. More than most people know. And those people, this is really funny. People who don't have any animals, I always feel sorry for them. I'm like, you don't have anything to cuddle. I mean, okay, if you have a fish, but you still can teach them stuff. I wouldn't. I had fish, but I'd put my finger in and they'd come up and nip my finger and stuff. It, it kind of freaked me out. But, um, you know, you can do a lot with an animal. You can teach them things. I had an animal, um, a boy cat, and, or was it Gizzy? I'm not sure. One of them, I would cry, and they'd lick my tears. That had to be one of the most touching things I've ever experienced, besides having my face eaten. I had my sister's cat. He would knead the back of my hair and suckle on it. It was a weird feeling. But eventually, I learned that it was comforting, and I'd fall asleep to it. The most wonderful sound to me is a cat purring when I'm trying to go to sleep. And now we don't allow cats in our bedroom because of the hair. Um, but this was back when I was young and didn't care about the hair. But, um, and Sheba, our all black cat, likes to knead. And she's got sharp claws. Regardless of whether we cut them or not, they're still sharp. And she's a pest. But, um, yeah, the, so then I have, um, the nest. It's a Google nest. And, um, it goes on your wall or whatever and you ask her questions and I don't know if you know what that is but um there used to be where you could play these night sounds and one of them was cat purring and you could have it go all night long and oh my god I loved it and now if you do it I think it only lasts an hour well it's not long enough so okay I know I think I've gabbed long enough um I hope that this brought inspiration and taught you something and didn't make you sad. I, I know it probably made you sad, but that's part of the lesson, I guess. You know, they say that there's a lesson in everything. Sometimes the lesson doesn't make sense, but I feel like it. the lesson was if you've done something in your past it may have been a mistake and you didn't do it on purpose I know I didn't it was like one of the worst things I ever did I'm like oh my god I came home and yeah and I got my face mauled by a little lizard that was a first I couldn't believe it I'm like you little shit she's very feisty but I like that that's a strong strong personality kind of reminds me of somebody I know so I hope you have a good night I hope that this video didn't bring you down that wasn't the idea the idea was to support you and um, let you know that you're not alone you know other pet owners have their troubled waters it's not perfect having an animal. It's hard. Especially, you know, if they're ill. My golden retriever still has problems with her ears. And we still can't get rid of it. And it's been like three years at least. And we still can't figure it out. We've tried everything. And even, you know, the vet, everything. And we still can't figure it out. Um, I tried everything. But I just give her Benadryl tablets. I'm like... Come on, Sasha, pills. She'll come and sit in front of me. And I'll say, come on, pills. And I'll grab her bottom jaw or her top muzzle. And she'll open her mouth and I'll 
drop them down her throat and they're gone. She's used to taking them. I haven't given them to her for a long time because usually it's summer. Okay, I'm babbling. I'm sorry. So I hope you have a good night. Um, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, let me know. I do go live um, pretty often just because I think it's fun um, to talk to other people even though like nobody shows up, but that's okay. It'll take time. So you have a good night. Know that I'm thinking about you and take care.